Studio A. This is WTAP News at 11. A proposal to cut back on coal-fired power plants is not going over well in West Virginia. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Phyllis Smith. A plan by a former New York City mayor to address climate change isn't going over well with West Virginia leaders. Michael Bloomberg announced the plan last week. It includes closing all remaining coal-fired power plants by 2030 and slowing down plans to build new natural gas power plants. Pleasance County has both, including the Pleasance Power Station. First Energy late last year vowed to keep that plant open through 2022. County Commission President Jay, Jay Powell says West Virginia is rich in natural resources. He believes they should be used to benefit the state's economy. He adds the United States generates only 10% of the world's carbon gases. Governor Jim Justice blasted the Bloomberg plan in a news conference this afternoon. He called it an attack on West Virginians. Bloomberg launched Beyond Carbon in 2011 with the Sierra Club. The goal is to replace the nation's coal plants with renewable energy. We'll turn to the weather now. Meteorologist Kirk Greenfield joins us with the first look at our forecast. Kirk. It's a quiet night in the Mid-Ohio Valley after the cold front pushed through. It's ushered in some cooler, drier air, and that's made for a refreshing change. When we take a look at our current situation outside, we can see the view here on the Highmark West Virginia Skycam. 64 degrees and only 67% relative humidity. That's still a lot of humidity, but it's a little bit more tolerable than what we saw all afternoon. The winds out of the northwest at 14 and the barometer 30.10 inches and rising rapidly. As a result, the clouds are beginning to dissipate. We see the last of the showers moving into the hills of West Virginia, and even the secondary line that tried to get started behind the main line didn't really make it into uh, our area. At least it didn't uh, materialize any time for us. The day planner suggests that it's 8 a.m. it'll be 56 and sunny. By noon, we're up to 68, and although it'll be partly cloudy at 5, we get into the mid-70s once again, but it'll be a cooler, drier air mass. I'll be back in a few minutes to talk about how long this will last. Phyllis? Thank you, Kirk. Just before 11 this morning, an earthquake jolted northeast Ohio. You can see the magnitude 4 earthquake on the Department of Transportation's cameras near East Lake, Ohio. Officials there say there are no immediate reports of damage or injuries. The U.S. Geological Survey is collecting responses from those who felt the earth tremors. Temporary traffic signals are in place near Lowell and could stay there for a while because of Friday's landslide. The slip happened early Friday morning. It closed off nearly three miles of State Route 60 for most of the day. The slide happened right before Bear Creek Road. Ohio Department of Transportation officials say it was caused by the moist ground from all of the rain we've had. Engineers were out this morning to analyze the slip. Um, unfortunately, we are going to have to keep that northbound lane closed at this time and keep the temporary traffic signals up. Uh, it's just unfortunately not safe to reopen that northbound lane right now as there is uh, trees and dirt that is still moving and has the potential to land on the roadway. ODOT officials say they are looking for a contractor to make the necessary repairs. They do not have a timetable for when it will reopen. A dump truck causes a slight delay for commuters in Washington County this morning, just north of Devola. Authorities say a truck heading north on State Route 60 rolled over in a ditch after trying to avoid stopped traffic. The Ohio State Highway Patrol and Devola Volunteer Fire Department both responded to the scene just after 1130 this morning. Troopers say there were no injuries. The driver was given a citation for failure to remain at a safe following distance. A top West Virginian Republican is calling for Governor Jim Justice to resign. Senator Craig Blair says the Republican governor should step down to deal with the many court cases that have dogged his businesses. Blair is the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee. He first called for Justice's resignation in a newspaper column over the weekend. Justice's spokesman didn't immediately have a comment. The governor has sparred publicly with ranking Republicans over a Senate GOP education plan that has brought dozens of teachers to the Capitol in protest. Justice has said the Republican leader of the Senate misled him on bipartisan support of the bill. Justice has been beset by damaging court cases regarding fines and debts owed by his private businesses.
Different agencies involved with Washington, County, Washington County's Drug Court are getting training this week from the National Drug Court Institute. The organization has been helping local courts succeed for over 20 years. Michael Tater reports. Changing all of the roles that we all have is part of this process. Washington County started its drug court back in January, and in that time, it has grown and seen some success. The National Drug Court Institute has been helping drug courts succeed for over 20 years and is leading a three-day training course for county workers. With best practice standards and the 10 key components of drug courts, um, so it's really exciting to be able to learn firsthand from the people who develop some of these things. We help them hone those practices according to what the evidence sees as increasing cost savings, reducing recidivism, what's going to impact both the community and the participant. Wheeler says drug courts are celebrating 30 years, with the first one starting up in Florida back in 1989 during the crack cocaine outbreak. Today, there are over 3,000 in the U.S. Treatment courts uh, to date are the most successful intervention in our nation's history to lead people living with substance use and mental health disorders out of the justice system and into the lives of recovery and stability. And Wheeler says through this multidisciplinary approach, everyone plays a role in helping someone find recovery. In figuring out how in their own role they can make changes or enhance the services that they're providing, the clients, the offenders, the participants. And that's what this training is really about, is bringing everyone's individual expertise and how do we make that cohesive for one person's journey for recovery. In Marietta, Michael Tater, WTAP News. Three deputies are honored with Wood County Lifesaver Awards, presented by the Sheriff's Office this morning. Todd Badger has more on their heroic efforts. We do all types of uh, responses to different things, and sometimes it's a sad ending. But in the case of three Wood County Sheriff's deputies, lives were saved. Sergeant D.D. Matheny and Deputy Tasha Hewitt saved the life of a six-year-old girl in last month's fatal fire in Davisville. The two deputies met up with the girl later in the month while they were on duty at the Wood County Relay for Life. They spent the rest of the afternoon together eating and talking and chit-chatting. And not only that, but uh, Sergeant Matheny called Deputy Hewitt, who was also working, and brought her over. So she also got to share time. And Deputy John Caleb Wetzel also saved a life last fall while responding to this motorcycle car accident on Route 14. Deputy Wetzel and a couple of other people responded, pulled the person out, and resuscitated him with CPR, and, and more than likely saved her life. In both instances, more than a job well done. Todd Boucher, WTAP News, Parkersburg. Judge Jason Wharton also gave the oath to Deputy Shana Modisett. She is a longtime member of the Sheriff's Department that was recently promoted to sergeant. Dozens gathered this afternoon at City Park to dedicate the Gold Star Memorial. The memorial honors those who have fallen in the line of duty and the sacrifices their families made in the process. It also serves as a reminder that freedom is not free. Along with Parkersburg Mayor Tom Joyce, Medal of Honor recipient Herschel Woody Williams spoke to the crowd before unveiling the monument. These memorials do not happen because of me. They're really done because there are Gold Star families in this community. We must, we must honor them and we must not ever forget. This is the third Gold Star Monument in the Mid-Ohio Valley. There is one in Vienna and another one in Marietta. Children head to West Virginia University of Parkersburg to feel like the big man on campus. Our Corey Smith has more on what they learned. From welding to exercise to golf, there was just a little bit of everything that children were learning about Monday at WVU Parkersburg. This is all part of the kids' college program that gives the children an opportunity to learn from an extensive list of different classes over the next few weeks. This program differs from a normal summer camp and gives students fun and exciting ways to learn new things. And I think that's an interesting part of what we do here is that typical camps, they're not as structured. Um, what we do is mixed learning and fun uh, to the extent where they're learning without even realizing it. You know, and that's the kind of the cool thing about what we do here. 
while children golfed outside, others engaged in a fun and exciting form of exercise called pound. It's fun to see them experience it the first time and not really know what it is coming in and um, just see how they light up. And some kids that may not may not excel in sports or other athletic activities, sometimes this this really speaks to them. So it's really cool to see that that um, that uh, confidence come out in some of the kids. Talking to some of the children, they already were excited after just one day of the program. My favorite part has just been um, seeing my friends from my school. So I'm just happy to see them again. From Parkersburg, Corey Smith, WTAP News, this is home. Still ahead, authorities believe a man that crashed into a skyscraper in New York City was trying to make an emergency landing in bad weather. He died in the accident. The full story at 11.